Hello and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to War Tales. My name is Saiken and today I invite you into the guide that will teach you everything that you need to know when starting War Tales. In this 20 to 30 minute uh, guide we go in depth over all of the necessary mechanics of uh, the game and in a concise, no repetition, no BS way I will lead you through the most important topics, how to start the game, how to build your mercenary group, how to deal with attributes and the starting settings, party composition, size, professions to take, how to feed the party, how to earn gold, how to deal with influence, knowledge points, different path, equipment, item levels, yada yada yada, and I will give you gameplay footage of all of that. So buckle up buttercup as we are joining the game. First things first, if you're starting a new game, you need to choose your destiny. The destiny will influence the types of characters that you get. You want to have a good mixture and, if possible, no massive negatives. I personally would recommend you to go with Desertus fleeing from an abusive captain. The swordsman uh, there is a great tank. The warrior uh, can skill into executioner and become a good AoE melee frontline DPS. Archer and ranger are all around great characters that can help you uh, with um, specific damage. Both of them are excelling at that. On the companions uh, side in the destiny you will get a bonus and not all of the bonuses unfortunately are created equal. We want critical damage to increase by 10%. Critical damage in this game is fantastic and scaling of critical damage is even more important. Debuffs equally are not created um, and from the same uh, hymn sheet. We do never want to have critical hit reduced or any form of um, permanent reduction of happiness. So instead you can either go for carrying capacity decrease uh, which is really easy to come by because uh, carry capacity can be compensated by ponies later or relatively low sense of loyalty which is not a problem because you never want to let your loyalty drop anyways. You're then prompted with either Adaptive or Region Lock Exploration. Adaptive is really the Skyrim approach where the enemies are always within your threat range and Region Locked is a predefined set of levels where you are finding yourself either under or over leveled if you're doing something wrong. I personally like Region Lock but it's up to you how you want to play it. Combat difficulty and survivability difficulty will increase over, uh, um, over time. You can choose um, these stats now but can change them whilst on the other hand these uh, settings here are permanent so choose wisely between region lock and adaptive. I personally went for expert expert but it really depends on your um, experience with tactical RPGs you can adjust that in the game later down. Since it is an early release I've heard problems of others to deal with Iron Man saves and I can understand there are a couple of quests where you do not want to fail the quests and Iron Man doesn't do a perfect job with that so I would go for free if I was a beginner and choose whatever combat difficulty suits your needs which brings us to the customization of the characters so let's take a look into that. The character customization allows you to select traits. Let's start with our tank. On the tank we want a couple of traits that make them tank better but also deal certain amounts of damage. For starters all of our characters should have bloodthirsty as a trait. Critical hit increase is fantastic in the game. And for tanks in particular, I like Guard, as Guard uh, scales has uh, a reductive value for all of the damage that you are taking and is going to be fantastic specifically in the late game. For negative traits, you should really avoid depressed reduction of critical hit or reduction of uh, movement. Any form of um, less experience is painful as the game currently has a problem with the experience curve. So you can either go for loafer for a lower amount of carry capacity or you're going for gluten which requires a higher appetite and requires more food. At the beginning of the game that will be painful, later in the game that will not be a problem. 
As it stands, there is the opportunity currently to select Drunk Card. That is the only trait that can be removed. Uh, just not feed them with alcohol. Um, all of the other starting traits unfortunately stay throughout the game. For our warrior, we're picking Bloodthirsty for more critical DPS and Strong because the 5% increase uh, of strength, specifically in the late game, will be noticeable. We want him to deal a lot of damage. We could either go um, Drunk Art or we're uh, reducing the carrying capacity in this case. As for the Archer, we're going Bloodthirsty. You are currently seeing a pattern here. And we are increasing the dexterity as uh, that is important it's the main stat we're going another drunk card and finally for the ranger we're going bloodthirsty uh, we're going nimble and we're letting them eat a little bit more you are ready to start the game now that you are within the game i will teach you a couple of simple tricks of how to survive in the world of uh, war tales for starters, we're going to look at how to make money. When you're starting the game, funds will be tied and you will continuously need to fight for survival. The easiest way of making money, therefore, is not only to sell all of the excess loot, but to go to the nearest town and talk with the emissary there. You can review a set of uh, different quests uh, that you can take. They are rated and I would uh, strongly suggest uh, to accept them at the beginning and include them into your exploration as this is a very easy way of uh, making money. Once you have a few of these adventures under your belt, you are free to visit uh, the uh, marketplace. There's always one um, vendor um, that will a sell a lot of trade goods. Invest some of your money and then move to uh, roaming vendors or even different towns as this is a sure way of getting additional funds. Couple that with uh, a few recipes that you could get at the beginning in order to last your adventure days a little bit longer. In this case I'm talking right. about specifically the apple pancake yeah. that will well, allow you to um, adventure longer. That will keep fatigue away and you will need to, to use less food, which neatly brings us to the second set of um, tips, which is how to deal with the food cost. Food can be daring at the beginning of the game as your companions will eat comparably lots and you cannot stockpile as much food as you might want to. However, there are ways around that. Here are a couple of tips that you should think about. I would suggest your warrior to pick up the Tinkerer uh, trait. That is a trait that uh, will give you critical hit. We'll come to traits in a second. And with the Tinkerer trait and the workshop, you are free to expand your camping gear. The first things that I would get is a cooking pot, which reduces the consumption of food by two. And on top of it, if you have a cook that is assigned towards that cooking pot, it will be another two reduction of food. It costs only the base materials, in this case, lumber and iron ore, and I'll teach you how to get uh, those. But before we are moving into resource management, you also get knowledge points for exploration. And some of the knowledge points will help you with your food problem, particularly rationing will reduce the baseline food by three. On top of that, as you are advancing throughout uh, the uh, world of War Tales, uh, for every fight that you're taking, a power and glory uh, path will continue. For every trade and craftsman that you're doing, your tradesman skill. For every crime, uh, stealing, murder and the like, the crime and chaos will improve. And for every exploration, myster mysteries and wisdom will improve. Both on the power and glory as well on the mysteries and wisdom, there are traits that will allow a consecutive three reduction of food so 
putting 3, 3 and 3 together and um, using your uh, newly found cooking, uh, cooking pot with another 4 already reduces your food by 13. The current food here is 19 so we would be down to 6 in no time. However, with uh, the sparse money supply, you also want to have a cook. And who is better than a cook uh, than having uh, the tank do it? So as, um, as soon as you have built your cooking pot, you can start uh, creating your own recipe. Later in the game, you will have a plethora of recipes to choose from, everything for your heart's content. The easiest, however, that I would suggest you take up immediately is bread. Wheat being very cheap, salt being very cheap and bread being nutritious with four food will give you the biggest bang for the buck. It is the most efficient way of um, hunting for food. On top of that, you can use uh, fishing as well as any animals that you are hunting down. Wolves and the like are working very well to get additional food. Which brings us to the next problem to solve, which is carrying capacity, and that is where ponies are playing an important role. You begin your journey with one pony um, and a couple of saddlebags. Saddlebags are by far the most efficient uh, use, and ponies should be used only to carry and never to be war ponies. Seriously, don't do it, war ponies are not worth it. The pony skill tree includes a fully left hand uh, side uh, skill tree with increase in carry capacity, higher run duration, even more carrying capacity and then a specialization, most of which uh, is potentially traveler if we're being honest. That will help you a lot with alleviating your carrying capacity. At this example, I've put in multiple ponies and we're at 700 pounds, more than enough. I've seen people run more uh, ponies if needed. Carry capacity, not a problem. If you need more, get another pony. Which brings us to the natural next question, which is which party member should retain which traits? Every single trait does not only serve a purpose of uh, surviving with your party, but it also gives a passive bonus. Um, let's take a look at the traits really quickly and I'll give you a rundown of what I would do. Cooking is a trait uh, that helps you to survive. It is, in my perspective, a must-have and uh, the constitution bonus is nice for tanks. I would put it on swordsman or brute tanks. Moving on to thief, uh, which allows you to obtain dexterity and critical strike. A uh, perfect uh, trade for a ranger or an archer. Both of them benefit from the dexterity as well as from the critical strike. It also happens uh, to be the trade that you need to open a lot of the locks. Moving on to the next trait, which is alchemist needed to create oils for weapons, as well as a couple of trinkets and medicine. It is a pure dexterity trait, and I would put it on archer or ranger, depending on uh, your selection of who got the thief. The other one should be an alchemist. Moving on to blacksmith and mining. Blacksmith is a strength uh, a bonus a trait, and mining is a constitution slash strength, so half-half uh, bonus uh, trait. I would, for smaller parties, put both of them together onto a single companion. However, be careful when switching between traits as you're losing the experience of the current uh, level. Uh, so every single level does have an experience bar, as you can see it, and it will reset for uh, each time that you are selecting a trait. So, uh, for larger parties, you might want to split them. Uh, blacksmith is perfect on melee frontliners, such as the warrior and spearman that are dealing damage, two-handed uh, wielding characters in general. I would suggest on a playthrough uh, with six characters to have cooking on one tank and blacksmith and mining on the other tank, as tanks can benefit from strength and are doing meaningful damage. Tinkerer is an essential skill 
gives straight up critical hit damage on a standard party composition that should be in the strength based front line so it could be for instance the execution or the spearman uh, since there is currently no trade that gives strength and uh, critical hit the pure critical hit would be good for melee dps that rely on it these would be the uh, six traits that i would go for an additional trait uh, that can be again um, sliced in as and when needed is the scholar trade willpower is a great um, option for your party it's a good trade for um, for instance a spearman um, or another support uh, character and you can combine it with other uh, traits use it whenever you're exploring mines try to get to a certain breakpoint where you level it up and then switch your, uh, switch back to another trait the other three traits are uh, less impactful. On larger parties you want to have them, on smaller parties you can skip them. Angler gives willpower and uh, critical hit. Um, however, there are plenty ways of getting food, so it's really not that needed. Bard gives constitution and uh, will. It is uh, also not as much needed as other traits and it will only shine later in the game and even then it doesn't shine very bright. So as and when you need to uh, scratch the trait, uh, Bard is potentially the first one that I would go for. Woodcutter finally allows you to um, create uh, wood. Whilst that is good for resource management in the beginning of the game, I would not necessarily go for it. If you really must have it in your party, put it onto a captive uh, that you're um, uh, that you're um, running along with your uh, party or alternatively just scratch it all together the upgraded campfire later in the game will generate enough wood for the beginning you will simply need to bite the bullet and from time to time collect wood as well as buy it but that time soon is over so re uh, repeating that uh, frontline um, should be cook, uh, frontline tanks should be cook, blacksmith and miner. The melee DPS uh, could be tinkerer as well as scholar and the backline dex based characters would be thief and alchemist. The next natural question is how to grow and shrink your party. The easiest way of achieving that is also in the tavern. There are a plethora of recruits around uh, your uh, nearest tavern. Every recruit uh, will be uh, a little bit lower than your party level, typically one level lower. At the end game, it's more two levels. You will see that they come with a set of traits in a perfect uh, setup. They will come with two positive traits uh, and zero negative traits. Use that as your main means of recruiting them as and when needed. You can additionally visit uh, the uh, prisons or capture enemies and then slowly gain their trust to expand your warband. However, be mindful because war, uh, the size of your warband uh, determines whom you're fighting. We'll come to that in just a moment. Now, before we move to the combat, I wanted to show you uh, two neat little tricks. Number one, how to rest without being interrupted which is uh, going into a town and then resting within the town you will see that there are no danger limit uh, levels so if you really need a true solid rest do that and secondly i wanted to show you how to get rid of companions that is not uh, easy after you've hired them and maybe want to replace some of them you actually need to be in the camp need to go onto the little grinding uh, wheel and then choose dismiss other than that, uh, the companions will stay and be loyal until uh, the happiness uh, will uh, drop down. Shortly talking about happiness, you should always aim to have 15 or more happiness. The easiest way of getting that is fully feed your companions, put people towards the campfire as that will generate happiness. If you reach 15 happiness, every excess will create influence, which you can use for quests and negotiation. and. Additionally, you will get more experience at the beginning 10%, later it's 20%, and with an upgraded uh, campfire, you even get more Valor points. So there is no reason or excuse not to have maximum happiness. Now, moving on to combat. 
When you're dragged into combat, there will be a pre-combat deployment phase where you can freely position your mercenaries. As soon as you take the first move, it will uh, start though, so choose wisely. One way of dealing with that situation is to uh, look at uh, the um, bar down here that will give you the initiative count. Double check whether or not you can reach uh, someone and act accordingly. Uh, one very potent strategy in the game is to deal with threats before they occur. In this case, our ranger will go in and uh, start to deal with the enemy archer in melee combat as they have no way of escaping. Afterwards, we're going to fully engage the enemy here and mop up. Enemies that are already engaged in combat will lose their ability to defend themselves if attacked from behind. The moment that three of your characters engage with an enemy in melee, uh, they will be surrounded. Make sure that you're not hitting your comrades by putting them in the fire line and try to focus down an enemy as a partially wounded enemy is still dangerous. So get them off of the battlefield before say, they can hurt you. Additionally, the game uh, operates on full transparency. You are free to inspect all of the enemies with their status effects as well as their abilities. That allows you to very much plan who is going to fight against whom and how to counter enemies' abilities. In their turn, they will execute and you will have a very clear uh, feedback as and when status effects occur. Make sure uh, that you know all of uh, that before engaging into melee combat with them. As and when you're successful in combat, you will find yourself uh, uh, greeted uh, with a handful of loot. Make sure to take it and always make sure to compare uh, whatever items you have found with ones that you have already in your possession. And some of them might be a slight upgrade to what you're already possessing. Weapons do have different abilities. This one here that I found is poisoning on strike. The other dagger just did have a normal step. So make sure that you fully understand your weapons before using them. Let's review two further strategic resources, which is knowledge and the path system. Remember that whenever you are exploring something, solving a side quest or doing something else inside of the game, you will find yourself rewarded with a knowledge point which can be freely attributed to either general upgrades which you find here, workshop related upgrades, uh, <clears throat> any form of smithing related upgrades, recipes, uh, apothecary uh, upgrades, uh, and alike. So how should you spend your first hard-earned uh, points? I will give you five really strong abilities or uh, spending uh, types. Number one, career plan allows your soldiers to upgrade appropriately. I'll come to the upgrade in a second. Run and sprint are vital not only to uh, avoid danger, but to move within the world. Rationing for less food, restoration for better repair are all important upgrades. So you should work around uh, them. I personally like the base upgrades of all of uh, the blacksmithing gear. I found them incredibly valuable. So I would suggest after you're covering all of your bases to go and uh, create uh, the points within blacksmithing search the resources and make sure that you are well equipped. It makes uh, the combats so, so much easier. As a general rule of thumb, if you're approaching an enemy, your equipment shouldn't be further off than one or two levels from their level. Blue equipment is uh, slightly stronger than the white standard equipment. Yellow equipment is rare equipment and even stronger than blue. So typically a level higher than the normal um, item level suggests and legendary equipment aka purple is two levels higher than it nor uh, the normal item level suggests so you want to make sure that you're grabbing the blacksmith perks next and then followed up after you do that I would potentially 
uh, skill into some of uh, the camp upgrades as well as a few of the basic uh, recipes bread is good wolf sausage is fantastic and if you do have someone who fishes uh, either of the fish recipes are also very very helpful these are easy ways of staying afloat at the beginning and that's what uh, you need to do you will get many more knowledge points than you can spend over the game Moving on to the path system that I wanted to explain as well. Paths, like I mentioned, are Warpath, Traits and Craftsman, Crime and Mystery Path. Let's review the most important things that you should take. In the War and Crime Path, I personally liked the Valor Increase. It is incredibly good. Improved Restoration into Art of Forge is the next uh, thing that I would skill. If you have a problem with food, start with rationing, then go into maximum valor and then improvement of your uh, restoration and forging. For the trades and craftsman uh, system, I started with long distance running as it is incredibly good. And then afterwards, uh, you can go into negotiations. Um, which will help you to earn more money in your uh, in your base missions I went for carrying capacity as that helped me throughout the game and waging a uh, wage decrease of uh, the companion certainly also is a nice bonus so in that order for crime and chaos I personally uh, liked uh, to start to start with uh, backstabbing, the critical hit chance is a combat uh, bonus into non-level. Uh, the other bonuses are fine, none of uh, them are uh, exceptionally well uh, compared to the others. They help you to deal better with uh, the wanted management. In the current state of the game though, you can simply pay off wanted, so some of them are pale simply based to the ease of getting rid of the wanted status. As for mysteries and wisdom, I personally start with asceticism uh, for less food, um, then going into either uh, the endurance run for a longer run duration, and then potentially into uh, just a scratch would be the first three that I'm taking. If you're really into animals, uh, you might want to take uh, the animal instinct and poachers. If you uh, want to create more weapon oils, which I explain in a second, you might want to go into exterminators and cleaner, but those would be the first three. Which nicely brings us to your inventory management. Equipment levels, armor, items and oils. Every single uh, item in the game has a level requirement. I already mentioned white and blue items are exactly the level that they are um, that they are noticing. White items even are one below, so a level 11 white item would have the base stats of a level 10 item. A blue level 11 item would be level 11. A, a, a rare item, so a yellow item would be level 12. And a legendary item would be level 13 uh, based on level 11 uh, as the base level. Uh, additionally, items can have stars, which you can see in the very top of the naming. That further improves uh, their quality. Um, so you need to look a little bit into the details. All of that sounds complicated, but it really isn't uh, that much. You want to have level appropriate gear. Um, I mentioned earlier in the guide you want to be between one or two levels off of the enemies. If you fight level 5 enemies, your gear should be around level three, four at least. So get blue gear or get blue gear with one or two stars. Now, how do you get that and how do you approach it? The best way for, from my perspective throughout the leveling was always to resort back to blacksmithing as you can directly influence uh, the quality of the gear that you are getting. Couple of um, aspects uh, to mention. Number one, um, um, some of the gear does have slots uh, and particularly the armor does have that. Uh, you can put uh, armor layers into that that further improve the armor. Um, you can find items with slots or you can create them. There are uh, ways of creating up to three slots on an item. 
you can then put um, uh, different armor layers into it in order to make it stronger. Um, for weapons, there are weapon oils, which typically are created by alchemists. You want to have one alchemist within the group, and I'll come to uh, the different professions in a moment. Um, weapon oils uh, significantly improve uh, the strength of your weapons. You can apply one weapon oil to blue weapons or two weapon oils to a rare or unique items. You want to always have weapon oils on your weapons no matter what. You can purchase them at the apothecary or you can create them yourselves. By or for creating them you need to exterminate rats where the whole uh, question about how many of those oils can you create becomes relevant. So that really sums up uh, the equipment for the start of the game. You want level appropriate gear, get the right weapons, get the right armor. Mind you, not all uh, classes can wear every single type of weapon. Swordsmen can wear swords, brutes uh, can wear any type of maces, warriors can uh, wear any type of axes, spearmen can only wear pole arms and spears, rangers um, use daggers and archers use bows. Um, most of the other classes, uh, rangers, warriors, brutes and swordsmen can theoretically equip an often uh, weapon. Uh, brutes, so, um, uh, swordsmen and warrior can equip shields. Uh, the ranger cannot do that. All of them can um, equip normal offhand weapons such as torches or other offhands. So, if you're interested in builds and how to structure a character, I do have a full section of builds for every single class. I won't go into that here in detail. Now, let's move on to um, the uh, start of the game and what to do next. So, you are now set up to deal with uh, the basic needs of your warband and you are ready to explore the world. Where should you invest your hard-earned cash at the beginning? Well, the answer to that comes in the form of the Brotherhood Trainings Ground. If this is the starting area of Tiltran, you will find the Brotherhood Trainings Grounds uh, just left or west of, of Stromcap. Uh, you can enter the training grounds and receive a variety of great services. For starters, uh, they are Don't offering additional skills. skills. And I we cannot can stress how important a, a well-rounded companion is. In particular, the first aid skill uh, as well as the run skill are really carrying their weight. I personally am a big fan of the Wrath skill as well as an additional way of dealing damage for low hit point targets. You will spend quite a significant amount of money and sink them into the skill set at the beginning and just when you think you are done you figure out that there are skill mastery books. Skill masteries help you to upgrade existing skills. As an example the warrior uh, does have in the executional uh, spec uh, a ability called Cutting Maelstrom. Cutting Maelstrom allows you to take multiple opponents and it swings once per opponent. The upgraded version swings one additional time for every killed opponent, uh, triggering a catastrophic chain reaction. Some of the skills are simply better when upgraded. Ovation as an example only quote unquote gives you repost but the upgraded uh, version uh, gives you motivation uh, which is a huge speed buff for your entire team the bottom line is you want to upgrade your skills so make sure that you invest uh, your money into the brotherhood at the beginning of the game now that you know how to deal with a start survive earn money and where to spend it what else should you know about uh, the game? Well, the first uh, few uh, hours of the game will uh, bring you through Tiltran, and I would suggest the following for you. Try to start your adventure from Stromcap. There will be a main storyline. I finished it on this playthrough, but the fate of Tiltran is a well worthwhile storyline that you can play through and you will be rewarded. However, whenever you are going back into the city, 
make sure that you are picking up a couple of bounties because they really add uh, to the experience. Make sure that you're selling the gear that you don't need. Make sure that you're hunting um, uh, fugitives and upon all, make sure that you're regularly uh, checking the resources in this particular area as they are respawning after a couple of days. The Mount Altus mine is relatively near to the starting location. Uh, the Petra mountain mine uh, is relatively close uh, to the Brotherhood. In between uh, is the Lund farm, which allows for lumberjacking and a fishing ground, which also respawns quite frequently. So this neat little round will give you almost all of the resources that you need. You use the wandering merchants as well as the town square to get some cloth or if you feel like it uh, kill some of the refugees as uh, they uh, drop cloth as well with that you should be set up to then uh, start your journey in smithing as uh, soon as you can smith you should try to do that as it um, allows you to generate really strong weapons. This being an example of an end game smithing weapon and level appropriate weapon that is as strong as level 12 uh, weapons uh, would be. With that, you should be set up uh, for success. If you are interested in deeper guides of war tales, I do have a plethora of them. Best party composition, guides for individual characters, combat guides, as well as a few tips and tricks that I wish I knew before starting the game. The playlist is very much linked in the section down below, so check it out and maybe give um, my Let's Play a try as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye bye!